Today's topic is digital media and the digitalization of society. It is a very important topic related to media literacy and the, the importance is in the fact that today uh, digital media has taken over the traditional media in, in a sense that uh, even traditional media like newspapers, radio and television had a very important choice, either adapt and go digital or die. And in fact, when, when we look at statistics, what's happening around the world, uh, many newspapers are closing down because they could not do the transition from, from print to, to online. And uh, even if just look around us, what's happening with uh, HD television, 4K, now we have even higher, higher resolutions, uh, the closure of the video rentals, watch, watching uh, live streaming, IPTV, all, all this has actually uh, created a lot of disruption in, in the digital media sector. And together with this, what we're going to see uh, is that there is the contribution of us and the users who has actually put a very important ingredient in, um, in, this, uh, in this recipe. So at the end of this presentation, uh, we would have talked about the digitalization of mass media and uh, the convergence of different media into digital media and uh, the rise of social media, web 2.0 and, and alternative media like blogs, user-generated content and activism on social media. This third bullet point especially is very important because it is a reflection of the digitalization of society and how we and users have become very important players in the media environment, the media landscape. Everything clear so far? All right. Yes. Okay, thank you. So, the rise of the digital society. Here we have cartoon, you know by now that I like to, to use cartoons in my presentations. We have the evolution of Homo sapiens, but uh, what's happening is, and this is the spirit of the cartoon, that uh, from from monkeys, okay, we went upright, but then because of technology, we we have uh, crowded again, and we are losing uh, what what we had gained over over uh, several thousand thousand years because we are so fixated with technology that we are always with our head buried in technology, and just to give you some some statistics an example of what's happening this this is this is something from last year 2018 uh, we're waiting for the latest statistics but uh, these numbers are mind-boggling when you see what happens in 60 seconds on on the media especially on social media you see that uh, there's a lot happening and when you compare 2018 with previous years uh, we say that the numbers almost double and triple and rise exponentially. But I have a question here. There is one particular feature with this content. When you look individually at the apps, you will see a very important and striking feature. For example, if you see how many tweets were sent, how many Instagram scrolls, apps downloaded, YouTube videos watched, text messages, Netflix. Netflix hours watched. What is the, the common factor among all these? When we look at this from the perspective of uh, new media, digital media, as opposed to traditional media, that is print, radio, and television. You have an idea? You see, it's always saying mostly mobile. Or, or yes, mo mo mobile is an important sector, but it's n just not uh, the answer I was I was after. But yes, it's an important sector. I think the most outstanding sector in this is that most of this content is produced by people like you and me, mm -hmm. not by business. The companies, yeah. Not by companies. Unlike traditional media, when we had television stations, newspapers, and radio stations, the content were, 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 was produced by them, and we were only consumers. But in here, what we see is that the tables have turned. Most of the content here is created by 
common people, not by corporations, not by businesses and companies. And this is the major disruption that we see in in um, in the media landscape. Another uh, infographic here, we see um, how much time it took for 50 million users to adopt different technology. Obviously, in the beginning, when telephone was introduced, uh, they had to build infrastructure, so it, would took, it took much more to reach 50 million users, but you, you can see that the trend is quite clear. As time went by, the number of years needed became uh, lower and lower and lower until the basic infrastructure of, of uh, te telephone gave rise to internet. And you can see that while it took 75 years to have 50 million telephone subscribers in the United States, it took only four years to have 50 million internet users. And if we go further down to software, to um, to the software, to the last one, okay? That famous game that un until a few years ago we were so crazy about it, Angry Birds. It took only 35 days to have 50 million users. Obviously, it was just so software it was easy to download, and, and this uh, was possible because the infrastructure, the mobile infrastructure and the internet infrastructure was in place. But it gives you an idea of, of how things uh, are developing so fast. And as I do in in my presentations, I always present something which is a little humorous. <laughs> I like it because uh, this, is, this is inspired from the famous um, the famous uh, principle uh, introduced by Mike Prinsky, which we have already covered about digital natives and digital immigrants. And here we have the digital native trying to explain to his grandma uh, the digital immigrant, okay, still on the high seas, not even in port. <laughs> How, how to change the settings and select Wi-Fi. Uh, it's not so clear. We've seen that uh, we cannot say that digital natives use media in the best way possible and digital immigrants is the older generation don't have a clue on how to use uh, digital media. We have a very big uh, gray area. But we're starting to see here um, both positive and negative examples of what's happening with, with the, the increase in use of digital media in the hands of common people. And here we have examples, unfortunately, we have many examples over the years of uh, how uh, digital media, especially social media, have influenced people in the negative. And we have example of people because of the photo, because of the content that they saw on social media, especially as, it is, as, as a result of cyberbullying, they even committed suicide or resulted in, in other loss of life. So this is something that we need, we need to keep in mind. But also the, there are um, <laughs> other humorous aspects. Uh, this is written in Maltese. Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, Jahan Online is, is uh, a humorous uh, Facebook page. And what it does is it brings the, these uh, very interesting, odd and humorous things about multi society. So, actually, what you see there, <clears throat> you can see it is trick or treat written in Maltese. It is related uh, to Halloween, but it is related in not poor Maltese, it is written in awful Maltese. It has a lot of spelling mistakes. There's no grammar, no no syntax, no punctuation. Even thank you is not written in Maltese. The last word, T-E-N-Q-U. Uh, is English, kind of. Uh, that's why I've chosen it. But yes, so um, it shows that we, are, we have a very strong and powerful tool in our hands, and we're going to see it when we talk about the fifth state later on. And yet, uh, unfortunately, or because it is reality, uh, many people don't know how to use uh, this uh, digital media. This is something I keep repeating and repeating because it is very important and uh, unfortunately, many people uh, don't realize it, that uh, the fact 
that we use uh, we use digital media so much the the business models adopted have rendered us users of digital media as the product and not the customers why for a very simple reason that many people like to use things for free because they provide it for free a lot of services indeed on internet are provided for free but <clears throat> from where do these companies like google facebook uh, get their revenues from advertising and to whom do they advertise? They advertise to us. Because the information that we upload online, the status, statuses that we put online, what we share online, it is uh, examined, analyzed by the computers of these companies, and therefore they uh, can have a, a profile, they do a profile of us, and send us uh, uh, adverts and commercials that they think that they are relevant to our profile. So yes, in the end, we are the product and not the customer because they are exploiting all this information that we put online to get revenues from advertising. Another negative issue that comes out is that uh, we are so inundated with information and updates uh, all the stimuli coming in every day that in a way we become insensitive and this cartoon uh, which is very poignant actually this this uh, this uh, this busker is not is not asking for facebook likes it's asking for money he cannot eat the likes he needs money to survive and yet people throw throw likes at him because it's very easy to throw a like but in the end, it doesn't do him, uh, do him any good because um, virtual, the virtual reality of it, it does not translate in something uh, that is tangible. This is another uh, reality of uh, the new digital media ecosystem and the new digital society. The most important companies in the world, uh, about which we hear a lot in the news, actually they are very, um, very distinct because in reality they don't own, they don't own none, nothing. And some of these are directly related to the use of media. The first one, for example, the most popular media owner created no content. In reality, Facebook doesn't create anything. It's only a platform for common people but also uh, some businesses if they want to, to share their content on their platform. So they are publishers, but they refuse to call them themselves publishers because they don't want to fall under the same rules and regulations of traditional media. Uh, this is something that, that Facebook is still resisting. If we go further down, we see that the largest photo sharing provider doesn't create any images. Yes, Instagram doesn't create images. It's also a platform for people to create and share images. The largest communication service owns no telecom infrastructure. And incidentally, WhatsApp is owned by Facebook. Yes, WhatsApp well, yes, is a piece of software. Obviously, it cannot, it cannot exist without the hardware, because without all the infrastructure that is uh, the wires, the cables, the satellites. These are very important. And yet, it makes the news much more than the, all the cables that we have going through our homes. And the last one, the largest breaking news service, produces no news. Indeed, Twitter is not a news provider. It has no journalists, no newsrooms. It's, once again, a platform for common people, but also media outlets to... Uh, to share the news, and apart from the news, also share other other content. But the reality today is that if you really want to have the latest breaking news, Twitter is the, the right place to go. We've talked about Facebook. Unfortunately, Facebook has been in the news for, for the wrong reason. Uh, and I think we all agree that uh, Facebook is an empire with all, over 2,000 million subscribers around the world. But uh, on the right, we have another 
another country from the economist, social media threat to democracy. And this all goes back to the Cambridge Analytica uh, scandal and how Facebook was used to uh, to influence how how mm. how how people voted and and in the democratic life of 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 a country. Yes, you have questions or comments? No, no, just uh, agreeing with everything. <laughs> Yeah, you agree. That's very good that you agree with everything. But if you don't agree, uh, don't worry. This is an interactive session. I would like to to hear your opinions, not not just uh, to hear to hear mine. We have another local example here of how things have changed, even in in uh, local elections, local media. What happens in the uh, general elections that were had in June 2017, where although according to law, Friday is a day of silence where people should be left alone to uh, think and decide how are they are going to vote the following day. In reality, hell broke loose on internet because people, supporters, and even the political parties themselves, they were still campaigning very actively on social media. And and thus the uh, the day of silence is, is no more thanks to digital media. And no one can stop doing this. When we even lose the, the, a few hours after a campaign of, of five to six weeks, we have one day of reflection. They they manage to keep uh, to keep bombarding us with messages. And this is what happens. A cartoon here actually during the electoral campaign of, of uh, 2017. Where where we are bombarded and we are we are left uh, with with what's called the voter fatigue. You have any questions or comments? No, I was going to say um, that in reality, no one can stop kind of the the, the media on Facebook. Um, so there's no control in a way, like like having I don't know a blog which is personal, so so people can kind of stop you. Yes, because it's personal. But what happens is that even though traditional media do not report on Friday, people just continue talking and fighting with each other. Uh, I remember a time, I don't, I don't remember exactly whether it was the 2008 or 2003 election, actually at the times of Malta Online, what it did was that on Friday, it, it, um, it hid all its, items related to the electoral campaign so that on the day of silence people would not be able to read uh, the <laughs> online online news it is funny yes why because um with with, with that with that um you know with that, that understanding the times of most of it have gone in every house and collected all the newspapers printed during the electoral campaigns, so that people would, would, would not be, be bombarded and, and influenced, mm -hmm. but you, you cannot do it. Actually, it happened, it happened only, only once, and uh, it was part of the, um, of the experience of the changeover from print, from print to, to digital. Another effect that's happening is on us personally, is how our brain works. Uh, maybe this is not directly related to, to media, to the media environment, but we are so bombarded, we are so glued to our screens that uh, empirical research is showing that the way our brains work uh, is, is transforming, is, is different because we, we are uh, bombarded by, by uh, not just this information, but the way it is packaged. And even though I have not, not I don't have it here in my presentation. There are some uh, former executives of these large companies of Google, for example, and Facebook, who, after leaving the company, they admit that um, they are not happy with the way that their invention, their technology is being used, not because of the people don't know how to use it, but because uh, their intention in the beginning was not that people would be glued to the screens and everything all their life would be 
in their screens in these mobile devices and yet the way these mobile devices were done by using a lot of psychological tricks okay so that people are hooked mm. the way facebook has used our our um, our content how google use our content to make money uh, these former executives high ranking executives uh, were quite unhappy and uh, when asked if they would they would do it again they said no mm. the characteristics mm -hmm. is that um, many people who work in silicon valley that is the hub of technological innovation in the united states actually put a lot of restrictions on their children uh, in, in using these devices because they know that what they have created is doing a lot of harm i don't want to sound very negative because uh, there is a lot of um, there are a lot of, of good things that come out of of, um, of the use of digital media, uh, but it's very important for us to be aware of the disadvantages um, of these negative aspects. Why? Because if we can, if we are aware of these things, and we try to minimize what's bad then automatically we are already um, making better choices making informed choices and maximizing the good aspects of digital media someone was going to, uh, to comment yeah i wanted to comment that there was recently several articles that you also mentioned uh, and one of them was talking about how all these uh, basically social media and uh, the things that they've created are influencing in the same way like crack like heroin is like, so like, like drugs yes yes the, the thing is that uh, even if we want to be uh, smart about our use of uh, internet uh, we are kind of losing that fight because these people uh, directly played with the uh, uh, pleasure centers in our brains. So we feel the pleasure when we are doing all the stuff on internet and we, we kind of justify it by calling it, oh, it's convenient, it's nice, but it's actually really addictive. And there are many clinics around the world lately of being opened to deal specifically with youth being hooked on um, on digital uh, tools and it's kind of uh, it's really scary yes yes it's scary and now uh, addiction to the use of uh, digital media is being recognized as being a, a condition so a condition, they are, yeah they are treating it li like other other uh, drug addiction okay mm -hmm. because it gives an instant fix mm -hmm. Instant, instant gratification this is one of the negative sides of it but 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 uh that's part of actually digital literacy digital literacy is um is important because it opens your eyes to these negative aspects and if you are aware of them then you can become a better a better user yes yes it's a very very important uh comment ivana yeah so uh, for a moment, we're going away from the digitization of, uh, of society and move straight into the news and information environment and the digital society. We'll talk about how the traditional media has been transformed and responding to the challenges of uh, the digital media. And here we have another cartoon uh, where, uh, unfortunately, when you watch the news today, it, uh, it has become almost um, a reality show where, uh, where we see a lot of things that we would not have seen in, in the past. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm not talking about uh, the big players, traditional players like the BBC, Rai, and, and uh, these uh, public, public stations who fortunately even today have kept high high standards but the, the way the way the news is is um is being challenged by the pressure to provide to provide what the people want and and people want gossip and people want to see 
what are other people are up to. They are not really interested in politics and in statistics and economics and all these things. And especially, and, and, and this is a very, a very negative aspect, people want the news to reflect their ideas. So they tune in to the media where they, they, they think they will find news according to their opinions. Um, this, this has created an environment where traditional journalism, good journalism, is struggling to survive. Because to be a good journalist, you need the time to, um, to investigate your story, to write your story, and then present it. And with, 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 with all this uh, overload of information that we have, even, even uploading or publishing your story a minute after your competitor is seen as actually uh, something which, which is negative, if, 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 if not catastrophic, for the survival of your media company. And in fact, we can see here that all the studies that have been done on the transition from, from traditional to digital media, uh, the main themes, the central characteristics that have come out on the, on the digital media on internet, these are grouped into three. We have speed and space. I have already uh, mentioned speed but also the space, because digital media has given a lot to more space, not for these traditional media, but also for us end users to, uh, to share our ideas. There is also multiplicity and polycentrality. We have many centers, the traditional centers, the newspapers, the television stations, the radio stations. These were the, the old established centers. They are no more. Because anyone who knows how to do a website with WordPress can become a publisher. Even with a Facebook page, you can become a publisher. You can become an influencer. And you, you can have many, many followers. And you can influence people. And this leads us to the third um, characteristics, which is interactivity and participation, which, in my opinion, is one of the fun fundamental pillars of digital media where the one-way communication model of traditional media that ha uh, is gone now and we have interactivity and participation. And by interactivity and participation, unfortunately, as we have seen in this screenshot earlier in this presentation, it can be very low-level participation, but not, not everything is, is, is at, at, that, uh, at that level. And so we are talking about a new form of journalism being born, uh, which has to take all this into account and uh, has to um, face all these challenges. And one of these challenges, obviously, is that people are reading less, people are reading less print newspapers, they are listening le less to radio, watching television news is also going down, but getting the news from online and digital sources is going up. And here the transition is quite clear. And if we have we had to um, to find a, a cutoff date, uh, the, the trends are more clear after the year 2000. That is when there was an acceleration in the adoption of internet and in, in the noughties, the year 2010 to 2010, uh, we had the birth of social media, which gave a very big boost to um, to the consumption of news online and started the interactive and particip uh, the participation of, uh, of common users. And this is what we had over these last 18 years. This is the situation. Those who managed to survive actually invested a lot in online news, and such as the Guardian Media Group, for the first time, the digital revenues were uh, more than revenues from print. And those who are managing to survive, this is the only way they can do it. So when we are talking about the importance of participation of the common users, you and me, that is a term. And the, the terms 
are producers and prosumers. This has have been coined uh, a few years ago uh, to describe people who not only consume but also produce. So I consume the news because I read the news, but I am also a producer if I have a website and on this website I have a blog or if I take photos and share my photos on, on social media. So common users have been transformed from simple consumers, simple users to producers, that is producers and users or prosumer, producer and consumer, a two in one. And this had, had had a very important effect uh, on, on the development of media and the interactive element uh, that we have already seen, which uh, opened a very big door to common people like you and me, and uh, posed a very, a very big and hard challenge on traditional media. And here we have an example. Because traditional media cannot be everywhere all the time, the fact that many people have a smartphone with a camera, they can take a photo and a video very easily, this has led to user-generated content. And here we have a sort of citizen journalism, another term which we have been using, um, to describe this, these people who do journalistic work even though they are not journalists. No journalist would have taken that video, but this uh, person was driving and the dash cam of his car filmed the crash of the aeroplane. And he later uh, gave the, the footage, the video to, 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 Maltese, to Maltese media. So in such cases, when there are accidents, uh, the footage, the video taken by common people are very important because uh, journalists cannot be uh, everywhere all the time. And this has given rise to a very important change because according to um, media theory, which we have already done, there were the gatekeepers. The gatekeepers are these media organizations who keep the gates and they decide what information flows, what information is released and published. But now we have these gate watchers. And who are these gate watchers? These are common users that watch the work of gatekeepers and disseminate the news themselves. So we have another factor now. So it's not only that traditional media does a gatekeeping function, but there are also gate watchers now who um, they provide a service because it is a service that they follow what the media are saying and they disseminate it and they share it and they comment on it. So actually when you see a news item on Facebook and you click the share button, you are a gate watcher without knowing it. So each and every one of us who share the news on, on Facebook or on other social media, we are, without knowing it, gate watchers. Horrible Facebook algorithm accident results in exposure to new ideas. What do you think? Have you ever heard about this horrible Facebook algorithm? It changes every time, <laughs> especially for those who... We know that it changes every time, but according to media literacy, what is, what is one of the most important things you need to ask yourself? Remember the source. Who, what, <laughs> when, where, why, what's next? The source. What is the source of this news? The Onion. The Onion. It is a satiric <laughs> online newspaper. <laughs> it's not a, 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 true, a true article. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Eh, Amanda. I, uh, <laughs> Ratio. Mm -hmm. it, still there? Yes. Did you recognize it? It was a satiric article. <laughs> Well, sometimes it is 
Sometimes it is um, written too well. Sometimes it's a bit intermittent sometimes. Yes, yes. Sometimes it's difficult. Was this uh, the same yeah. one that posted about the altar boys? Yeah, it's different. Yeah, uh, similar. Uh, similar. Similar, yes. Similar. But the, the altar boy, the onion is famous as a satirical newspaper. Mm -hmm. The altar boy, that, 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 uh, that incident, uh, that online, online, uh, online news service is not so well known. So many people did not actually recognize that it was fake. Mm -hmm. So yes, we have to be very, very careful about this. And then that's what you are saying, Amanda, Facebook overhauls trending feature after bias claim. Facebook cannot get it right. That is the <laughs> truth. Because every time it tries to do something, uh, there, are, uh, there are repercussions and collateral damage. Now, now they are trying to do something about the, the European Parliament elections in May and, uh, and so on and so forth. But, but yes, the influence of Facebook, that's why we, we saw that front cover from, uh, from The Economist where Mark Zuckerberg, the chief of Facebook, is seen like a Roman emperor because he is a Roman emperor, after all. Even after all the bad press that Facebook had over, over the past few months, it's still a very, very important news, digital news uh, platform in the world with over 2,000 million subscribers. No other company in the world has so many subscribers. Paul Sasson, 1994, wrote that in a world of hyperabundant content, point of view will become the scarcest of resources, especially if the web is a simple wasteland and millions of Maurins sharing their derivatives. He wrote this in 1994. I think 25, year, 25 years later, he has been proven right. He's better than Nostradamus. He got it right. 25 years ago. When the internet was in its infancy, it wasn't even launched in Malta, 1994. He foresaw what, what we were going to have. And yes, re especially, point of view will become the scarcest of resources. Because we don't have different point of views. People live in their bubbles. Okay? We have seen this when we did meet media literacy. People actually only seek opinions that agree with theirs. They live in echo chambers. And what happens is we don't have different point of view. And then we have these millions of Mowins sharing their derivatives, like the trick or treat that, that, that I use in the slide. What happened is that some, some news outlets decided to put a stop to the comments on their news sites. And this included the Times of Malta because there's so, so much drivel, so much hate and xenophobia written by people on their articles that they decided to, to make it a stop. Another important feature is taking photograph because suddenly everyone has become a, a photographer, okay? <laughs> and I use this because it, it, it puts us back into a perspective. So he went to the moon, took five photos, and and the, this girl took thirty-seven photos, just going to the to the bathroom. Where it should, shouldn't be a lot of interesting things happening, but 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 you know, but maybe this is more more poignant. They are taking a selfie with Hillary Clinton. So the most important thing is not Hillary Clinton, but taking the selfie with Hillary Clinton. So the focus wow. has changed here. The focus is me with Hillary, not Hillary at the political rally, like this one, which is a little bit disgusting. Don't take a selfie with, with a person who's trying to do suicide, to commit suicide. In fact, there was a case recently um, in Italy. One was drowning and they were taking videos. They were drowning. In Italy. I think I, I, Amanda. 
Do you think sorry? that will happen in Malta? Sorry, sorry, again? Do you think that such things can happen in Malta? Oh, for sure. <laughs> the one that you've shown with the, with the bathroom, I remember two girls in a bathroom next to the sink. I could not wash my hands when they were taking selfies. <laughs> but look at this. This is from Malta. <laughs> People were only interested in filming. The only thing missing was a bag of popcorn, victims say. <laughs> so even here we have that, that, uh, that trend, unlucky trend. When the medium is the message, look look what happens when, when uh, people abuse the media and especially this one, which, which ha has happened recently, okay? When you, you can't even stay in bed with your partner because there's a possibility you end up being the laughing stock of everyone. Hmm. I chose this for a reason, but I would like you to um, give your reaction. The victims are in Turkey. Mm. So you're seeing the actual thing, but <laughs> yet it's like you're at home watching TV. <laughs> yes, yes, Amanda. If you are in the football ground, you're watching the real thing. So what's the use of having all these screens? Mm -hmm. Suddenly, your screen takes over. So you are in the ground, but you're not watching the, 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 uh, the match with your own eyes directly. You watch them through the screen. Suddenly, you have a filter. Who is the... Who is, now, I ask you this question. Who is the best person to watch a live football match? the person in the football ground or the person watching it at home? At home, <laughs> in your pyjamas. <laughs> at home, no, not for that reason. From a media, <laughs> let's say from a media point of view now. Framing close-ups. Yes, we are almost there. But you, you miss something. When you are in the ground, you choose what to see with your own eyes. Mm -hmm. But only from one vantage point, yours. One point of view. So you have one point of view, but no one can interfere with that point of view. If you are at home, you have multiple points of view, but there's a fit filter, there's a gatekeeper, the television station. You have no control whatsoever on what you are seeing. If the television channel decides to provide close-ups of only one player, mm -hmm. it's up to them. You don't have any control on it. But anyway. More on suicides, unfortunately. Yes, where the media, the media has an influence on what is happening in our life. So we do it because of the media. Mm. This is entertainment. This is television. Remember the first cartoon? Mm. But then they will have become broadcasters. And if you are not careful, you can land into trouble. Because <laughs> everyone has dash camps to the, not oh, everyone, man. but many people have dash camps. Yeah. We have mobile phones, we have smartphones. There are many, many cases, not just in Malta, where people have lost their job because they were filmed doing something which uh, was uh, irregular or illegal. True. Even in Malta, we have come to that stage. When, when, when you apply for a job, they look at your social media profiles to see what you do, what you are up to. Exactly. In fact, I when they... Yes? In fact, 
when there would be a, something like this going on. So you know, a lot of people would say, it's better that we are back in the 90s because we did so many random things, so many legal things, but there was no way that we got no recorded. Cameras, no cameras, so they have no <laughs> <laughs> But now they have a lot of proof of today of what we're doing. And unfortunately, uh, we are actually inviting inviting um, people to take photo of us that will eventually be used against us. Mm, exactly. Um, but but that's life. Um, I will stop here today. I'm going to three different states in in the next uh, the next webinar. Uh, do you have any more questions? I'm all right. Tom. Or remarks to do? From my side, it's okay, Martin. Tom, thank you. Uh, it's okay. We haven't heard heard anything from you, Brad. You are very uh, yes. Very quiet. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so just following. <laughs> just following. Okay. 